This is really being lost on the radio audience. Hard rock. I'm willing to accept your compromise. Hard rock. Actually, patriot is a noun, much like idiot. <laughs> Hard rock. They've been tailgating all day and they're drunk at a football game. Just shows you absolutely everything that's wrong with this country. Hard rock. You should feel it now. And I did. Hard rock lunch box. Ah, uh, greetings everybody. It is another Thursday, therefore it is time indeed for another episode of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. And of course, if you're watching this at home, it's still the Hard Rock Lunchbox. But it could also be the top 20. Who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? I'm Mitch Hedberg. That's right. <laughs> um, I don't know what's going on. I'm going to start the day, as I know you love to, with a technical issue. Yay, everybody. <laughs> probably not so much a technical issue as much as it is I didn't hit the button right. I don't know why that is. It looks like it should be working, but, you know, who knows. So, it's quite possible the this current episode of the Top 20 that you're watching a week in the future will have no sound, and we could argue whether or not that would be better or not, but maybe... Um, I think it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. This beard, by the way, <laughs> not by the way, it is the way. So I'm trying, like, I realized last night, and this is probably only going to be a problem for roughly half of my listening audience. Um, I don't really know how to shave for a beard. I'll give you a good luck if you're top 20. See? So it's like, so, right. I mean, it's not helping anybody on my radio audience. Like, I can kind of get this, like, I shave the sides down. Because they just get all curly, and now I look like I ran, you know, was president in the 1800s. Like, I don't want to do that. But what, what's really happening is I'm digging this bottom part. If anybody ever saw Don't Mess With The Zohan, like the part where Rob Schneider is talking about the goat, and you just, like, rub that part. Like, you can see it here on the top 20, so in a week you'll be able to see it. Like, I like doing that. I think I was talking about it a couple weeks ago, and I was saying, like, it helps me think. Like, very Freud. Like, mm, yes, yeah, super ego. It, yeah, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm enjoying that, and I guess I'm okay on the side and the mustache. I hate having a mustache, but, like, I just can't bring myself to be one of those people that has a beard and no mustache. I'm not saying it doesn't work for everybody. It's not for me. Um, but the problem I have here, and I'll welcome any thoughts in the chat, by the way. Uh, it's it's the under, the underbrush. I don't know how to manage the underbrush under here. I don't know if I should shave it, cl shave it clean and then just have it like the going there. This is really being lost on the radio audience, but I'm, I have all this. You know what? It's not important. <laughs> Much like everything else on this show, <laughs> my friend, it is not important at all. <laughs> Let me just do a quick check. Ah, make sure that's recording. Camera is currently on. We are transmitting in the chat, 99WNRR.com, and I look at it right now, and it turns out that I am not ignoring it. I uh, got a survey email from Hochul about which issues are important. I checked off every box. I'm sure Governor Hochul will get right on it. come as no surprise to anybody, any regular listener of the box, and I am no fan of Governor Hochul, which just goes to show you just how much I really didn't like Lee Zeldin. By the way, I had what I thought was a great idea this morning. Uh, you want to talk about, like, do you, does anybody remember when I threatened to run for Congress? I don't know that anybody listening now was actually listening to the show back then. So I had threatened to run for Congress, um, I don't know, nine years ago, eight years ago. And I was going to run on a couple of platforms, uh, but one of them, one of them was I was going to run on a platform of mandatory gay marriage. Now, does anybody remember that? It was very controversial, but I had a very good reason for it. You'll find this in politics a lot, uh, where, and you honestly, you find this in relationships a lot. Like, this is just something that happens. You know where you really find this? In divorce, <laughs> in divorces. 
Uh, so if there's any uh, deforces out there, this might sound familiar. But basically what happens is that if you're the reasonable person, what you'll do is you'll ask for a reasonable thing. So, like, in politics, uh, let's just say, uh, let's take the infrastructure bill from 2021, right? Trillion-dollar infrastructure bill. What it was originally supposed to be was, like, a $4 trillion. Now, that's really expensive, except when you start to consider what the GDP of the United States is and, like, you know, tax share and tax burden and stuff like that. Uh, so... What happens is that responsible people come to the table and they're like, okay, our bridges are crumbling, our train, our our light rail is ridiculous. Like, it's laughable in the world. Uh, We don't manufacture anything. You guys just remember, like, COVID, how we don't make masks. Uh, We don't even make nails anymore. There was a a story about that a few years ago. I was talking about the last company that made nails in the United States moved to Mexico. Uh, so we don't like so we we're investing in our country. So it, it was smart. This is what it's going to cost. We want to go solar as f everywhere we can because even though solar technology costs some money, if we invest in it now, it's only going to get better and better and better because other companies will start being in it. Like government leads the way in that kind of thing, which is why it was so awesome when they uh, New York City had like electric cabs and electric buses because that, in my opinion, uh, municipalities that did that, that in my opinion is the impetus for why car companies started really investing in that because like well we even if we can't sell to the general public we can literally sell to the general public because we can sell to their governments and municipalities so anyway so you're intelligent and you're smart and you come to the table with something in the middle like okay this is what we need we need all this other stuff and then the other side that's completely unreasonable is like well no we don't want that uh and we come and they come to the table with something like um we want all women to be barefoot and pregnant because men, white men specifically, it's not very ridiculous, are superior. So that's what an irrational, unreasonable argument is to an infrastructure bill. And then what has to happen is you have to go somewhere in the middle. Right? So like, all right, we'll give you $1 trillion for infrastructure, but uh, women can't get their tu- tubes tied if they want in Colorado. It's basically what ends up happening. So I was using that logic. This was like eight, year, eight years ago, and I was going to run on a... Um, platform of mandatory gay marriage. And the reason I was going to do that is because I figured if I ran on a platform like that, all the people, because this was, this was a little while ago, so remember, like, it was still illegal. Like, gay marriage is new. Like, that, like, that is new and probably temporary because of the Supreme Court. Uh, but this was back when gay marriage was not legal in all 50 states and was not recognized. So I was thinking that I would just run and and just make sure that, okay, now everybody has to get gay married. Like, whether you want to or not, you have to get gay married. And my hope was that people would have to come to the table and be like, hold on, I don't want any penis in my butt. I mean, you might, and uh, zero judgment from me. Like, if that's what you want, that's that's what you want. Like, that, if that's what makes you happy, that's fine. But um, if you don't want to uh, necessarily be gay married, uh, then you could come to the table and be like, how about we just let people that are gay get married and i'd be like you know what i'm willing to accept your compromise and that's how politics works so that's what i was running on a few years ago my old drummer mike bontempe thought it was probably one of the most genius things i've ever come up with and i've known that dude since high school (laughs) it would have worked too (laughs) anyway so my brilliant idea this morning i was uh I, don't, I, I gotta stop doing it. So, I, I, I'm not on Facebook anymore, like, hardly ever. And if I am, like, it's... It took everything I had to not, you know, Sarah Huckabee Sanders my Wednesday because she's such an idiot. And such, such a problem. Such a representative of the problem. But she's actually way more smart and way more ideological than some of the real dunces sitting in Congress right now. And so... With the absence of Facebook, what I, I follow some people on Twitter, like some politicians. And actually, I started following Adam Kinzinger when he joined the January 6th commission. Because I was like, that's interesting. I wonder what he has to say. Uh, so, I, you know, sometimes I see stuff that's interesting and I just read that. And then I start going down the wormhole, which is the rabbit hole, which is such a bad idea. But I, I, came, to, <laughs> I came to a tweet from Lauren Bob Bobert, who is the uh, dumb fuck from Colorado. Oh, excuse me representative from Colorado and uh, 
her tweet was something something along the line, like my pronoun my pronoun is quote patriot and then somebody else responded um, actually patriot is a noun much like idiot <laughs> and it's been hours and I am definitely still laughing about that not because it's nice to do but because it's hella funny it's also accurate she's also dummy so it kind of got me thinking so uh, if you're a listener to the box you know how much I cannot stand her I don't like hypocrisy just it really bothers me and the fact that she was like a teenage mom that got knocked up and couldn't finish high school just shows how irresponsible she is the fact that she took government money and like has now four kids that are just sucking off all the you know government money for schooling and stuff like that uh, really really bothers me uh, all by itself but the fact that she preaches to other people and now we pay her like hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year to basically be an idiot in, in Congress really really bothers me and then you have like the Marjorie Taylor Greens of the world who like totally like cheated on her husband several times and is still bitching about the morality clause and compass of, of, of Congress I mean like really just like these these two bimbos are just the worst and like we don't even need to like talk about Matt Gates. Although it was really funny because I did see a meme with him like as a commercial, like a like an ad for Venmo. And he's like, I use Venmo for minor purchases, but it's minor because he traffics in, you know, young women across state lines and prostitutes. And then, of course, there's our very own George Santos. And by very own, I mean not mine because I live in Suffolk County where we're still, like, intelligent at all. As opposed to, like, northern Queens and Nassau County who just seemed like Santos was just such a nice guy because he was completely full of shit. And you guys were just too stupid to realize it. And you voted a complete fraud into office. You literally voted the person that P.T. Barnum warned you about into office. And it turns out there's nothing we can do about it, because the only way we can get rid of him is if the Republican caucus decides to throw him out of Congress. And Kevin McCarthy's not going to do that because he's barely got a hold on the on the party at all. And by the way, the, 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 the actual, just, just the sheer disgusting behavior of the Republicans during the State of the Union, like they're, they've been tailgating all day and they're drunk at a football game, just shows you absolutely everything that's wrong with this country. And I'm not even saying it's just the Republicans, but in this particular case, it was just the Republicans. Like, you are horribly disgusting people, and you are lowering the bar for our so social and civil discourse, and you are the problem. There is no other issue in the country, as far as I'm concerned, that is rises higher than your level of inferior discourse and inability to act like adults when it's required and called for. You're disgusting for sending those people to Congress, and those people into Congress are even more disgusting. Which brings me to what I like to call DJ's Great Idea of the Week. It's a new one-time segment here on the Hard Rock Lunchbox. This week, DJ's Great Idea of the Week is... If you are in a congressional district in the great country that is the United States of America, if you are in a congressional district that the majority of people in the rest of the country feel that you have failed in your responsibility to send a decent human representative to Congress on your behalf, if we have deemed that you have failed to do it, Lauren Bobert, Bobert uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, definitely George Santos. If you are a congressional district that has done that to this country, you get to sit out for the next election. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. You don't get to vote, and you don't get to send a representative in. What do you think of that? How about that, Nassau County? You think you aren't represented now by your cross-dressing, dog money-stealing, lying douchebag of a congressman? You'd be better off with no congressman, and that's what I'm proposing. I think it's a great idea, and it can work across parties. Like, if you have failed so bad in your civic duty to send a decent representative to Congress, you don't get one. I don't even know if I should go on with the rest of the show. This is so goddamn genius on my part, I might as well just retire. How about some light housekeeping, people? What do you think? What do you think? Time for time for some light housekeeping? Just check in with the chat first. Uh, incentivize radio people, right? Right. Thank you. Yeah, it is a good way to incentivize to make uh, radio people watch the top 20. I agree. Uh, 
Sheldon just dumped his campaign treasure he shared with Santos. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, Lee Zeldin. <laughs> Light housekeeping. All right. There's a brand new top 20 out today. It does not have the beard stuff I was doing. That'll be next week. But if you want to teleport to the future, you can probably see it. Also, let me know what you think. Um... This is what I'm talking about when I'm handed a shortcut to the song Inside, and I'd be forever grateful to my producer for that. Also, on the show, uh, I was reading the uh, articles of secession from Mississippi that they went ahead in the future and just lied about, because why not? Uh, that's kind of cool. And then uh, DeSantis, all the stuff he's doing. There's a whole article, I think, in Vice or Vox. It's like, this is what happens when DeSantis comes to your school. And it's not good. Uh, generational poverty. Hippopotamuses are awesome. I don't I feel like I need to keep telling you that. It's okay, if everything you do on the box. It's, uh, you know, it's just as good as all the other videos. Um, again, if you have any ideas of how to promote the top 20 a little bit better, just let me know. I'm open for ideas. I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm horrible at social media these days. I'm also not a 14-year-old girl, so I'm not on TikTok, so please don't suggest TikTok. It's not going to happen. They finally started doing reels for the show. I feel like that's about enough. Thank you. Uh, also, on Bacon is my podcast. They have 75 episodes coming out this week, apparently. Seven questions will be Michelle from Casper. Uh, you might want to check that out. Uh, hate it, but haven't heard it. Tribalism in music is lame. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to watch that because that sounds really up my alley. I'm guessing that's what came out just this past week. No, sorry, I'm not guessing. That's what came out this past week. Uh, and I'm going to go with uh, Keanu Thompson is seven questions. That should be tomorrow if I have their schedule right. I think it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But honestly, they just do so much stuff. I can't even keep up with it. I don't know if Jamming with a Stranger has a new one either. i got to check that out. I like Waterbury's stuff. He does his top five that I just generally disagree with. And even if I agree with it, I'm still going to disagree with it because it makes it more fun. <laughs> um, what else is up? Uh, i got some videos to release. i got some lyric videos we're going to release. we got a lyric video that I don't like so much for Blue. We have a lyric video for Easy that I like a lot. Uh, we're going to do that. And then... Um, the Dirty Deeds video is going to be coming out sometime this year. We're just trying to work it out and like get all the scheduling done, blah, blah, blah. It's very hard to run Rebel 9. It really is. It's really hard to run Rebel 9 when you have no motivation to do so whatsoever, which blows. But that's on me. That's not a you problem. Um, I definitely had something else I was going to talk about. And for the life of me, I don't remember what it was. Does anybody else remember what I was going to talk about? Something. Uh, let's see. Congress. That was not what I was coming here to talk about. I was coming here to say something. Um, I don't remember. I uh, I don't know how many people know this about me medically, uh, but I am a proud grower of kidney stones. It's not a diet thing; it's a genetic thing, apparently, because they they did all my thing. It's not like the oxalate stones; it's something else. So that sucks. But I had to go. <laughs> I had to go to my urologist yesterday. Now, if you've never been to a urologist, it's basically just like kind of a penis doctor. We just <laughs> we can just call it what it is. But um, the funny thing is, is that so this urologist, this specific urologist, was the one that did my second surgery, um, and it's actually one of like I I have had three surgeries in my life. Two of them for kidney stones when I was an adult. One, I had my tonsils yanked out when I was four. That was scary. Um, so when I had my first set of kidney stones done, this was five years ago maybe, um, it was it was so bad, like I literally could not stand up. And so I had to go to the ER for that one, which I don't recommend. Um, but it was, it was kind of painful, and I have anxiety. Like I pretty well documented anxiety. Um, <laughs> And I, I, you know, I went into the emergency room like at, I don't know, 10 o'clock at night, and I had surgery scheduled for like 6 a.m. I'm also not a morning person. So what have we learned so far today? Like, I have bad anxiety, and I'm not a morning person. Like, these are two things you really need to know about me. So 6 a.m., they're wheeling, wheeling me into the, um, wheeling me into the, uh, the operating room. And they strapped me down. Like, dude... If you've ever been strapped down, I mean, I don't know about for pleasure, because I do not like being confined. It's not something 
Uh, it's, it's, it's like a genetic thing because my son has that too. Um, but I do not like it at all. <laughs> and so they strapped me down and I had a panic attack. Uh, and I was grateful for the you know laughing gas that they finally gave me to knock me out. But it was to the point where um, when I went for my second surgery, which was scheduled, uh, which is way better to go, it was a scheduled one uh, to clear out all the kidney stones in my left kidney, uh, which have grown back. Or not all of them, but some of them have grown back. So if you wanted to know what to get me for Christmas, it's not kidney stones. I have my Thank you. Uh, but when I went... I had a nurse, wonderful nurse. Like she was just so pleasant, and like, like you, like, (laughs) like I know there are mean nurses uh, because I've seen them, I've dealt with them. But man, nurses are literally little angels. (laughs) I mean, they just are. And this one was no exception. She was great. We were just having a great conversation. I was telling her about like, I was worried because I had had a panic attack last time this had happened. She was like, oh, just tell the anesthesiologist he'll be in in a few minutes. And, uh, and, like, they'll help you out with that. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't even really know that was a thing. I was thinking maybe they'd give me some, like, I don't know, Xanax. I I don't even know what people take in the hospital. Like, I know what I take. (laughs) But I don't know what people take in the hospital for, for that kind of stuff. So the anesthesiologist comes in to tell him the whole story. And he's like, oh, that's no problem. We can take care of it. And so, like, I'm nervous because, you know, about to get surgery on my dingus, basically. (laughs) I'm not not thinking it at all. Uh, But so I go and I tell him the story, and he's like, oh, okay. So he pulls something out of his pocket. He's got a syringe and dips into it. He's like, all right, I can, you know, I can definitely help out with that. So um, he injects some, and honestly, on me for, like, not even asking what it was, but, like, so he injects into my IV line because I've already had an IV put in. Injects into my IV line. As he's like depressing the cylinder and the syringe, I'm like, you know, like, how long is this going to take, do you think, to like, keep me down? It's like, is it going to be enough time? And he's like, you should feel it now. And I did. <laughs> and. That story is funny enough because I would love to get my hands on whatever that was, by the way. Like, if anybody is like, if anybody's hanging out one of those sketchy bodegas and they see like a pack of whatever DJ was talking about, like, pick up two of them, man. I'll give you some money. But the best part (laughs) for me (laughs) about that whole story is that now I'm having a grand old time. Like, I'm just, (laughs) this is just fantastic. If I could spend my life like that, like, I mean, I'm sure there'd be some liver damage, but, like, I felt great. Like, things were going really well, considering what was about to happen within the next hour. So I get in to the operating theater, and I see this new urologist. This is the one that I actually just went back to yesterday. And the main reason I went back to him is because he's kind of like my age. He's a cool dude. We're having fun, and I'll tell you more about, like, what was going on uh, during the... uh, during the appointment later on in the show because I'm running out of time, unsurprisingly. Um, so I get in the operating theater. It's cold because it's probably like April. I have my Rebel 9 hoodie on, right? So keep in mind, I'm being wheeled in. I'm in a hospital gown. I have my Rebel 9 hoodie on. Uh, it's actually on me like backwards, right? So just just a walking advertisement for the band. Most of my listening audience has a Rebel 9 hoodie, so you know how comfortable those things are. So I was wearing them. So, yeah, operating theater, Rebel 9 hoodie, hospital gown, feeling really great <laughs> from whatever they had just given me. So I go in. So now I'm all chatty. Like, I'm talking to the surgeon. He's like, oh, yeah, he's, how you doing? I'm like, I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing great, doc. This is fantastic. Like, other than what you're about to do, this has been a pretty good day. Uh, so then he starts talking about Rebel 9. Now, oh, the other thing you need to know is that uh, a couple weeks earlier, we had just played the Paramount. We had opened for Rat at the Paramount. Anybody that saw that show knew it was, it was a good show. It was a big deal for us and all that other stuff. So, yeah, just opened for Rat, Rebel 9 hoodie, hospital, you know, surgery room. DJ is pretty much high as F at this point. So he asked, he's like, oh, you know, like Rebel 9, like, is what is that? And I'm like, oh, it's my band. And as I'm taking it off... And I'm like, we just played Paramount in Huntington. I'm like, so we're kind of a big deal. So let's not fuck anything up here. (laughs) 
And to his credit, he laughed out loud at that. And I was like, cool, this is going to work out just fine. Just please don't saw off my dingus because that's going to be a bummer. But I don't know. Now, probably if they sent me home with a pack of whatever magic juice they put in my IV, I would have figured out a way around it. But I will have more about the appointment because I think it's funny and why not? I need stuff to talk about. But on the downside of things, I have roughly 15 songs that I dragged over to play today, plus two others that I really kind of need to play today. So it's going to be a busy show. So I hope you guys have no plans for lunch, or at least you're ordering in. But we got to at least get started, because I don't have all day to hang out with you guys, mainly because I do not have a shit ton of money, unlike some people, but like more importantly, like what... Liz Fair says that we need to have. And it's actually shitloads of money if you want to be like you know, a dick about it. But I'm going to go get some of that IV juice and I'll just see you on the other side.